Say hello to the all-new high-performance flagship electric scooter from Roadrunner, a new major player in the micro-mobility arena. This is the RS5 Plus. A dual-motor 42-mile-an-hour beast packed with lots of the latest and greatest technology and features available to modern scooters. The retail price of $2,290 puts it in a premium price tier and sets a lot of expectations for it up front. Let's see if it lives up to those expectations. First though, a little bit about the company behind the RS5. Starting as the exclusive US distributor for NAN Robot in 2021, Roadrunner decided to transition to designing and selling their own scooters last year with a focus on cutting edge tech and customer service. They offer a one year warranty on all their scooters with the option to purchase up to four years of protection. On top of a great warranty, they offer expert repair services and a huge selection of replacement parts for all their scooters. They're based in the US and you can demo any of their scooters at their Denver showroom. There is a ton to like on the customer service side of things and it's always refreshing when we see brands focused on supporting their products after the sale and not leaving them out to dry. This alone is a very compelling reason to buy from them, but let's look at the scooter itself and see what it has to offer. First, the RS5 Plus is an attractive modern electric scooter. It really has that new age look that many of the scooters that have come out over the past year have with futuristic sharp angle design in the right places while still looking sleek, smooth, and low profile. It really is good looking and turns heads when it's out on the street. It also is packed with features and checks many boxes on my dual motor electric scooter wish list a big bright center display, hydraulic nut brand brakes, tubeless 10 inch tires, sine wave motor controller, and removable battery. The removable battery is a feature that sets this scooter apart from its competitors and is a huge reason to consider this scooter over others at this price. I'll jump into it in more detail in a second, but let's start by taking a look at all the features of the scooter from the top down. The cockpit is not too different from other light heavyweight scooters. The 650 millimeter wide handlebars are plenty wide for good control and stability even at the highest speeds. I also have no complaints about the handlebar grips, which felt comfortable even on longer rides of over an hour. One of the two standout features of the cockpit is the large center mounted LCD screen, prominently displaying the current speed in the center. The riding mode, battery voltage, battery level, and odometer are displayed smaller but are easily readable at a glance. You also get a number of icons to show the status of the headlights, turn signals, and current motor mode. The screen also has a dual pivot mount allowing you to adjust the screen to your preferred angle and height. It's an LCD screen, so it isn't as bright and crisp as an LED screen would be, but I found it plenty readable even in direct sunlight, so I've been quite happy with it. It is nice to see modern high-end scooters pivoting away from the tiny circle displays built into the throttles and towards easily readable center displays. The P settings are adjustable from the display and are easy to access by triple clicking the power button. I kept all P settings on their default other than the acceleration strength, which I turned all the way up to the maximum of five, though honestly I didn't feel a huge difference in acceleration power between the default of two and the maximum of five. All our other preferred P settings will be linked down below. The other unique feature is the central location of the key cylinder over the stem of the scooter, something I've actually never seen before. It's mostly just nice for keeping the key out of the way and not cluttering up your handlebars. One place where I feel like the cockpit falls short is in the outdated button and throttle design. The dedicated single dual motor button, the headlight switch, turn signal switch, horn button and throttle are all the older plastic style of components. This design of thumb throttle is not my favorite, having a bit of a flimsy feel to it. But everything did work without issue and didn't ruin my experience with the scooter. The hydraulic disc brakes are a strong point of the RS5 and I tend to like the nut brand of brakes present here over the Zoom brand brakes that we often see on other similar scooters. Hydraulic brakes tend to be more reliable and require less day-to-day -day tweaking and maintenance. I also like how easy to operate the hydraulic levers are, requiring just a single finger to operate to full effect, leaving most of your fingers on the handlebars when braking. Braking distance in our testing is on par with other light heavyweight scooters, stopping in exactly 10 feet from 
from 15 miles an hour, though we tested it with the regen braking set to the lowest setting. Increasing the regen amount in the P settings gives you a more aggressive braking style and brings the scooter to a stop a bit quicker. I tend to prefer the feel of lighter regen braking with the disc brakes doing most of the heavy lifting for smoother, more controlled stops. The RS5 is as solid and stable as it looks and has a twist style stem lock, one of my favorite styles of lock, plus a safety pin to prevent any kind of accidental folding. Twist locks offer a great balance of stability and low folding time, giving you a rock solid stem with zero play without making it a chore to fold and unfold the scooter. The handlebars sit at 41.3 inches above the deck, which is an above average height and a huge plus for me. I'm a taller rider at six foot one, and one of my biggest frustrations is when the handlebars are too low and I have to lean forward or bend down a bit to ride. Weight transfer and steering is easier as well when low handlebars don't force you into an awkward riding position. The riding platform is quite roomy with plenty of space for my large feet and offering a number of different comfortable riding positions. The rear tail of the platform is nice and flat, making it a natural place to rest your rear foot even for extended rides. The rubberized deck mat offers plenty of grip and I felt solid and planted on the scooter no matter my speed. Let's dive into my favorite feature of the RS5, it's removable battery. Removable batteries on light heavyweight scooters like this are very rare and the conveniences offered by a removable battery like this are amazing enough to make this scooter stand out and above the competition. What surprised me was how easy it is to remove, install, and change the battery pack. Getting into the guts of an average electric scooter and to the battery is typically a time-consuming, annoying process. On the RS5, the hinged deck lid, secured by a three-digit combination lock, swings right open, letting you quickly unplug the battery and pull it out by the handle. It installs just as easily. You can carry the battery somewhere for easy charging, or you can bring an extra battery with you for easy swaps when you run out of juice on a ride. The RS5 Plus comes with a 52 volt, 28 amp hour battery that gave me 25.3 miles on the ESG official range course. This is a respectable number and in line with comparable scooters. The beauty of this scooter is that for those needing more than the 25 miles this battery offers, you can carry another battery with you and swap it in less than 30 seconds to instantly double your range. The 28 amp hour battery weighs a manageable 17.8 pounds, meaning that carrying an extra battery around in a backpack shouldn't be too cumbersome. Both the 23.4 amp hour battery and the 28 amp hour version are available on Roadrunner's website and both work in both the RS5 and the RS5 Plus. In fact, this is the only difference between the RS5 and the RS5 Plus, the size and brand of the battery, with the 28 amp hour battery containing LG cells and the smaller battery containing generic Chinese cells. With this being the sole difference between the two scooters, the sub $2,000 price of the regular RS5 is a very appealing buy if you want all the features of the RS5 Plus and are okay with less range and perhaps a small hit to performance. Speaking of performance, let's jump into the specs and our performance data. The RS5 is a 52 volt system with dual 1200 watt hub motors for 2400 watts of nominal power. It has a claim top speed of well, the web page says 45 miles an hour, but the user manual that came with the scooter says 42. The user manual seems to be more accurate because in our max speed test with our pro grade testing equipment, we were able to get the scooter up to 41.6 miles per hour with a displayed speed of 46 miles per hour. This is on par with similar scooters and plenty fast to get anyone's blood pumping. Acceleration is strong enough to spin the tires, but the sine wave controller and adjustable acceleration settings make it manageable for any rider with a bit of experience or practice to rocket up to the top speeds quickly without throwing themselves off the scooter. I weigh about 210 pounds and I clocked a 2.5 second zero to 15 mile an hour time, but lighter riders will naturally get faster acceleration times. Paul, who weighs almost 50 pounds lighter than me, got up to 15 miles an hour more than half a second faster for a zero to 15 time of two seconds. This scooter is no slouch. It managed our 200 foot 20% grade hill climb test in 9.5 seconds, accelerating all the way to the top. Again, the hill climbing data for this scooter is affected by my heavier weight, so keep that in mind when comparing this to other scooters in our database. Testing and numbers aside, this scooter is just plain fun. 
It delivers exactly what you want and expect out of a dual motor sport scooter like this, and I've enjoyed my time testing and riding it. It's fast and nimble and eats up most bumps and potholes that I encountered. The hydraulic spring suspension offers adequate travel for almost all street riding and should be able to handle your average dirt road. It has damping and has a much less bouncy, chunky feel than a lot of the other spring suspension on the market, which I like a lot. The all-terrain 10-inch tubeless tires that come on this scooter are great, offering the benefits of pneumatic tires while avoiding pinch flats that tubed tires get. The tread is great for any surface and the rounded profile makes cornering smooth with good surface contact through the whole turn. Being large, heavy, and dual motor, this 91 pound scooter isn't particularly portable, but I do like the design of the deck latch for locking down the stem when folded. The hook slots into a hole in the tail and locks under the deck, keeping the whole mechanism out of the way of the riding platform. This also means the handlebars aren't going to flop around when trying to load the folded scooter into a car. You'd be surprised how many high-end scooters don't have deck latches like this. A couple quick, less important things that I noticed about this scooter. One, the kickstand is beefy and solid. I always like to see a kickstand that can handle the weight of the scooter and not fall off after a couple of rides. That has actually happened to me a number of times. The front light is mounted low, and like most scooter lights, it offers enough light to get you home in the dark in a pinch, but I would always recommend picking up an extra handlebar mounted light if you plan to ride at night often. The pros and cons of this scooter are quick and easy removal of the battery for easy charging and range extension, comfortable ride thanks to the large riding platform, footrest, hydraulic suspension, and pneumatic tires, top-notch after-sales support and warranty options. And the cons are outdated plastic thumb throttle, last-gen buttons and switches, and the extra batteries are quite pricey. If you're comparing Comparison shopping right now, here are some alternatives to consider. Links to these scooters and our reviews of these scooters will be linked down in the description. The Cabo Mantis King GT's adjustable hydraulic suspension, more aggressive off-road tires, and 17-pound lighter tested weight give it an edge when it comes to riding off-road, but the Cabo is a little more expensive, lacks the tubeless tires and removable battery of the RS5 Plus, and has a much lower rider weight limit at 265 pounds. The VSET 10 Plus is the quickest of the group from zero to 30 miles an hour and has the largest battery for the price, but as usual, we've got to ding it for having the worst ergonomics of the group. But more importantly, lack of sine wave controllers means the throttle just isn't as smooth as the RS5 Plus. The Apollo Phantom V3 is the only scooter in the group with a dedicated regen brake, and despite having one of the longer, more comfortable decks, is the shortest overall and easiest to fit in your car trunk. But the RS5 has the edge in terms of pure performance numbers, and did we mention it has a removable battery? The RS5 Plus is a scooter that delivers the performance and ride feel that you would expect out of a $2,000 scooter with one of the most unique features available on light heavyweight scooters with its removable battery. No more carrying a 90 pound scooter up and down the stairs to charge it, and no more worrying about range when you can carry a whole other scooter's worth of range in your backpack. This scooter is a serious contender and merits consideration if you're looking for something in this price range. Check out the Roadrunner RS5 and RS5 Plus at the link below where there's also a discount code for $100 off. This is Mitchell with Electric Scooter Guide and I'll see you in the next video.